that breaking news comes from here, our nation's capital. President Trump tonight becoming the third president in U.S. history to be impeached by the House. And when the votes were all added up, Nancy Pelosi, as you'll watch here in a second with the gavel, and warning members of her own party, do not cheer, do not applaud. Only three Democrats broke ranks in voting on the articles of impeachment. The first, abuse of power in soliciting interference from a foreign government. That's Ukraine. The second article was obstruction of Congress. President's aides who had been subpoenaed to testify never did. Tonight, ABC 7's chief political correspondent Scott Thuman with how we got here. Well, after a vote is taken in the House, what normally happens is lawmakers will make their way down the stairs in the front and they go towards the cameras and they will talk with reporters and give their re response or reaction. Uh, tonight, we saw a lot of law lawmakers running away from the cameras, which is a first in my professional experience. We did have a couple of lawmakers and also a filmmaker that took some time to talk about what happened tonight inside the House. We begin with that breaking news from Philadelphia. A horrible situation is playing out there right now. We know at least four police officers have been wounded in a shootout. They were given a call to say they were going to report to a shooting incident in this neighborhood in Philadelphia, and that's when they became the target. Witnesses say there was a rain of bullets going at those officers. This has now turned into a standoff situation. These are live pictures right now from the scene. This is a video from earlier where the police officers were trying to figure out where the gunshots were coming from and trying to get cover and also throwing officers in cars and getting them to the hospital. This is happening near Temple University. That university has been put on lockdown. Down. Fortunately, the hospital is not very far from the scene of this shooting right now. There are reports that somebody had been arrested near the scene. They have no idea if that person was involved in the shooting. But again, you can see there is a massive response right now as officers are taking cover as they are trying to get this person who has made them the target out of that house. At this point, unclear the condition of the officers will continue to track this situation through the night, both on ABC and also on our WJLA.com website. To get to MS-13, we traveled into one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the city of San Pedro Sula in northern Honduras. Right now we're heading into an area that's completely controlled by the gangs. We're going to sit down with two members of MS-13 and we were told when you come into the neighborhood you have to have your windows down so they can see who's coming in. We agreed to meet at an abandoned home. We were told not to videotape anyone until the gang members could cover their faces. How old are you guys? Cuantos años? 18. On the left, an 18-year-old. On the right, He's 20. They've been MS-13 members for more than three years, both Sicarios, Spanish for hitman. So what kinds of things do you have to do as a gang member? We start by selling drugs, and after that, you become a hitman. So you guys are both hitmen? Yeah. Who do you kill, though? Anyone who's not part of the gang. So who tells you who to kill? The boss shows us a picture and says, you need to do this and this and this, and we go do it. They claim every killing is worth $1,000. Do you guys ever feel bad? No. In this life, there is no feeling. Hours before this meeting and across town, the Honduran military showing off the results of a two-year investigation. Ten gang members wanted for drug sales, extortion, and murder. Have you guys ever been to the United States? No, we cannot go. We are part of the gangs here. If you go without permission, you get killed. But some MS-13 gang members are known to have entered the U.S. illegally. And the Trump administration's call for tighter border security are based in part on their ongoing concerns that more could sneak in. In Honduras, the gang crackdown has helped cut murder rates in half here. Per capita, Baltimore and St. Louis now have higher murder rates than San Pedro Sula. So things have really changed. Yes, yes. Much better. Yes, as police, I can tell you, it's, it's better. <laughs> the National Police have a state-of-the-art lab to help solve murder cases. Despite that, the gangs are growing. I compare them to as the ants. You can kill some ants, but a few minutes later, you will see a lot of ants coming from the, the bottom of the earth. It's the same with them. Do you worry that you, you'll end up as one of the victims? We don't have that mentality. When you're in the gangs, you know that can happen. You don't have to feel fear about that. What do you want people now to know about MS-13 in Honduras? MS-13 is the best and only gang out there. Once you're in it, it's your family. It's your life. There is no leaving it. 
We'll put down all rivals because MS-13 is the strongest gang in the world. The military police are aggressively hunting and tracking them. But for now, the people who live among them continue to live in fear, as do some Americans worried about MS-13 already in the U.S. For Inside Your World, I'm Jonathan Elias in San Pedro Sula. Okay, and now we're talking game seven, three more outs, and, and, the world and you win your world first here's world here's the best part. Bryce Harper leaves the town, and everybody was, woe is Bizarre. me. We lost the big hitter. You know what? This team gelled, came together. They started having fun after the, the, the all-star break. Yeah. And you would watch it in the dugout. They were like grown men that played like little kids. They loved the game. They played it so well, and they really stepped up. They all fed off of each other. Yeah. And the next thing you know, they, became, they had the best record in the league. They went into the postseason on fire. Yeah. They came back from all these deficits with the Dodgers and extra innings in the game five, the final deciding game. Unbelievable. And now here we are, game seven, the stage doesn't get bigger yeah. and their play doesn't get any stronger. All right, all right. Annalisa, the crowd here is erupting. You know, here's what's great about this. There are some probably 20, 25,000 people in the park yeah. getting wet, having a great time watching this game, especially now that the game has turned around. And they're and, starting to pile it on, too. Oh, yeah, and up the street, the bullpen, the bu that that's place, an outdoor venue. That place is unreal when they have big games here, unreal. I think we had video a long time ago of people tr actually trying to climb up in the bullpen. You know, it, at a ballpark, they go to the bullpen to warm folks up. This yeah. bullpen, you go to just get warmed up to be with your friends and live music. But, again, it yeah. speaks volumes about the fans here in Washington when they will go outside, stand out there, hang out with the friends. Tom Rousey's in the bullpen for us tonight. Tom, that place must be going bonkers, uh, too. I was honored to actually help commemorate Veterans Day here at the World War II Memorial. They have friends of the World War II Memorial. They help with the National Park Service maintain this memorial. If you've not been here before, it's an absolutely spectacular memorial. And on hand were more than a dozen World War II veterans. So many have, have gone ahead because they just, it's 96, 100, 102. And so it's always an honor to have them on hand. And they were there, as well as a number of other people who were spending Veterans Day here at the World War II Memorial. If you've not been, it really is an amazing place to be. It's 56 beautiful granite columns representing the states and territories that contributed 16 million men and women to the effort of World War II, a war that had we lost, we would have lost our country. And sadly, some 400,000-plus men and women did not make it back from the war, and that is why this memorial stands. And on this Veterans Day, it was nice to see some of the young and old walking up to these World War II veterans yeah. and just going up giving them a handshake and thanking them for the service and then engaging with them in conversation and hearing their stories. And just a spectacular day for yeah, all of it. It, really it was, was just beautiful down here. Now we want to go to Loudoun County where the high school there is now honoring the first Virginian to die in the Iraq War. Yeah, the school there now is naming the ROTC Annex after James Jimmy Adamowski's memory. The captain was one of the first killed in Virginia. And as our Northern Virginia Bureau Chief Tim Barber reports, his memory is now inspiring future soldiers. We have beautiful weather here for this parade. We have thousands of fans. When the head count is said and done, I got to believe this is going to surpass what we had for the Capitals. Yeah. But in fairness, that happened during the week. Right. This is a Saturday. It's a perfect day. People were out here hours in advance to try and get a front gate seat to watch these buses that are going to come down. They're already starting the process of loading up those buses. The players, their families will be up. We've seen this before with the double-decker buses. And they'll make their way down Constitution Avenue. They'll come right here to where we are. The stage that's up behind us, that's where they'll give their speeches. They'll hand out awards. And they'll fire up the crowd. And if it's yeah. anything like the Capitals, there's more players on the ads. They'll have a lot of fun. <laughs> well, you know, and the mayor, she made a good point. She said she really likes the idea of it being on a Saturday because yeah. they didn't have to close the federal government or worry about the federal employees who maybe would want to come and couldn't get out of work. So right. it works out for everybody. You could come out and enjoy this gorgeous weather yep. and this huge celebration. And Adam Eaton mentioned to Scott Abraham, you know, Washington, D.C. is known for not always getting along not agreeing but this right. is one thing that has really brought our city together in a really special way no question and there was that feeling too the Nats every home game they made because this was a special series keep in mind historic too they never won a home game right. so every time they came here to play they lost a game which kind of crushed the hearts of the Nats fans well now this is their way to make up for that to come with a rolling rally and then have the parade and then have the rally behind us would be a lot of fun you won't miss anything. By the way, if you're planning on coming down here, you still have time. The Metro is by far your best option. Well, that was some celebration. <laughs>
You know what? That's one of the biggest parties this city has ever seen. It was pretty special to feel the support from the city and for the team and the players and the owner and the coaches to be able to recognize the fans and how they've stuck with them from the beginning. And, you know, we've said it all along. This was a team that actually played together, really enjoyed each other's company, really liked working together. We've known that, but then watching them on stage and seeing Davey <laughs> Martinez, and he got kind of emotional talking about the guys. He said, I'm not going to talk about them unless they're right behind me. Yeah, and, and just right. so many touching moments. We were hoping, with our fingers crossed, that Rendon and Strasburg might get up there and say, I'm staying. <laughs> but it That's, is business, so we'll yeah, have to wait. Yeah, and, and, you know, you got to stick with the moment and live in the celebration and stay with the present because anything can happen from here. Sure. But you mentioned emotion. Ryan Zimmerman, who's been in this city since day one, he really got choked up yes, several times. I mean, can you imagine what it's like for him having been here 15 years and to finally celebrate a World Series championship? Well, he's such a talented first baseman, and he's a good bat. He has a good batting average, so he could have been a commodity traded on the open market at yeah. any point and could have played for the money and made more money somewhere else. But the fact that he stayed here knowing something good would happen, and you think about it, he's now in the waning, the waning years of his career. So I don't know how many more years he's got to play, but he didn't finish out his career before he put the ring on and hoisted the trophy. So That's this right. is a great celebration for him.